New York State has a new goal. How many people have to get vaccinated before all COVID restrictions are lifted? We hang on to this heat and humidity all night. What to expect by morning? Mozzarella, pasta, they have everything. And New York Live goes inside an Italian institution. This is News for Now for June 7th. I'm Adam Cooperstein, and we now know what it'll take for New York State to lift all COVID restrictions. But exactly when it'll happen, that's a little tricky, but it's up to us. Today, Governor Cuomo announced that all COVID restrictions will lift when the state reaches 70% of adults fully vaccinated. Right now, we're at 68.6, so we're close, but another 1.4% need to get vaccinated before the final remaining restrictions are lifted. Cuomo expects that to take about eight days. We're talking about things like social distancing, some capacity restrictions for events, the disinfection protocols, and all those health screenings and contact tracing at businesses. When we hit 70%, then I feel comfortable saying to the people of this state, we can relax virtually all restrictions. We're at 68.6, almost there, but this is in horseshoes. We wanna be at 70%. As for masks, the state will continue to follow CDC guidance, and that means masks may still be required in some places, like large venues, schools, public transportation. But New York State did lift the requirement for masks outdoors at schools, so now it's up to the individual school district. Officials are trying to figure out what caused a Sea Streak ferry to run aground in Brooklyn. That ferry was towed to a shipyard on Sunday, one day after it lost power and steering, just as it was set to dock in Brooklyn. 125 passengers were on board, and they had to be rescued from the boat because it was taking on water. Officials say one crew member was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Sea Streak is now working with the Coast Guard to figure out what the cause of the power failure was. Now to a News 4 I-Team exclusive. It's been nearly five years since a mystery bomb blew up in Central Park, taking the lower leg of a college student. And he's never publicly spoken about that explosion until now. The I-Team's Chris Glorioso sat down with Connor Golden to talk about his incredible recovery. After a lower leg amputation, he is now back on his feet and back to slack lining. That's the tightrope walking game that he was planning to do with friends in Central Park just before the blast. And despite a $40,000 reward in the case, investigators are still stumped as to who planted that explosive. But Connor says he has made peace with this unsolved mystery. I really didn't waste a second looking for an answer or like a something that would make a wrong right that wasn't in my power. So I was never looking for anyone that did it or I was never looking for revenge because I feel like in order to stop these patterns of violence, we have to be the ones to stop it. In that exclusive interview, Connor also talks in depth about how playing music has been a key to his recovery. He says he chose to speak publicly now to show the power of music as medicine. Starting today, Nathan's Famous is adding a new meatless hot dog to the menu at 13 locations in our area. According to Nathan's, it's the first ever gourmet plant-based hot dog. They say that they're rich in protein, low in saturated fat, and made based on the same secret recipe that Nathan's uses for their classic hot dogs. Until now, Nathan's had only been selling the vegan-friendly hot dogs in meal kits online. Well, after a hot weekend, Maria, still no relief in sight, at least not for a while. It is more of the same, a lot more of the heat and humidity, and we're going to hang on to all of that as we get in th through this evening. Mostly cloudy skies, still near 80 degrees at 8 o'clock, and temperatures only slowly falling off into the 70s as we get to the overnight. It's the cloud cover and all of the humidity that sticks around that'll keep those temperatures up. In fact, you look at the dew point, it's an absolute measure of how much moisture is in the air. 40s and 50s, really comfortable. You get to 60 near 70, which is where we're at that is really, really sticky. So we don't see anything uh, like drier air moving in at all. So it's going to be a very mild start to the day. Again, a lot of haze as well. Temperatures down near 73 degrees in the city. Newark as well into the mid 60s north and west, even for Long Island, starting off in the mid 60s with a lot of humidity. They don't sell mozzarella, but they sell mozzarella. New York Live has more from a New York Italian institution. 
Today I'm going to bring you to a true New York City institution, one that has been making mozzarella and mouthwater for over a century. We are here at Russo's Mozzarella and Pasta. Thank you so much for making me feel little today. <laughs> it's been a while. I have that effect on most everybody. Oh, Jeff, I'm so happy to be here. I've been a fan of Russo's for as long as I can remember. When somebody walks in here, they're guaranteed to find every single Italian specialty that there is. Yes, except wine. We don't sell wine, unfortunately, but we drink a lot of it. I now have people that shop there that were in baby carriages when I first started. So it's like, you know, it's a nice thing to see. Okay, so now uh, we're in heaven, <laughs> or in the back, about to make the mutz. I'm gonna break off a nice little piece for you. Uh, just watch me. Okay. Just rolling it into itself like that, You're just feeding it mm -hmm. into itself. And you see that shine just yeah. boom, right there? Yeah. And then you have to just close it like that. Right. Okay. Now squeeze it as hard as you could. It's not, not tear. Oh, sorry. Just, I know. Everybody tries. Just squeeze it as it's hard as like you. It's like a hard part. Yes, that's the hard part. Your husband messed up. Go ahead. Come on. Very good. After this, we're going to put it in a salt bath. Okay. While we're making this, let's do proper oh. pronunciation for everybody. Okay. Let's okay. do it. Okay. When somebody comes in and asks for this. They say... Mozzarella. And to which you say... I don't sell mozzarella, but I do have mozzarella. Mozzarella. You getting the hang of it? I am. I, I, I actually love this. You hiring? Yes. <laughs> Christmas Eve, I'd like you here at yes, 4 a.m. exactly. A. Now you sound like my family. Joelle, before you go, we're going to name a sandwich after you. Did you hear that? Now, you told me your favorite would be mozzarella, prosciutto, pesto, and roasted artichokes. I'm getting so spoiled today. I think the greatest compliment you could ever pay someone is that you feel like you're at home. And I will say here at Russo's, I, I, I really felt like I was, I was with so my much. family for we a day. Really trying to treat everyone like family, but you, 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 know, you were really easy. I might be walking out five pounds heavier, but we're still <laughs> family. <laughs>You've heard that no good deed goes unpunished, right? Well, tonight that's the case for members of a Brooklyn firehouse who thought they returned a runaway dog to his rightful owner, but now a heartbroken family tells News 4's Ray Vieta their lost pet ended up in the wrong hands. Holding on to their posters and holding on to hope their pooch turns up. My wife was taking out the garbage and Rocky ran away. A good Samaritan bring him to the firehouse. Is anyone missing a puppy? That was last Monday. The firehouse engine 227 put up this citizen app video trying to help track the owners down. Someone claimed the dog, but it wasn't this family. They said a lady um, came and claimed the dog, and but with, they don't know how she, they couldn't identify her. They didn't know who she was, where she lived. Natasha says they have the dog tags, the license, and went to the firehouse prepared with the proof. The dog is also microchipped, but Rocky was gone. We stopped by the firehouse. No one there would comment. The five-month-old mini Aussie hasn't been seen since. Now the family looks back at these home videos of the friendly pet. How did you come up with the name Rocky? Because he looks like a little baby rock. His crate sitting empty, his memories filling up their Brownsville apartment. He loves to play around and I like to play around with him. So I feel bad and my sister really loves him. The family offering a reward to help get their little pup back to make this home feel complete and these youngsters happy again. He was playing with me, he was, he was fake biting me, he was doing a whole bunch of stuff that makes me happy. Do you think about him every day? In Brownsville, I'm Ray Vieta, News 4 New York. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.